This week, we speak with Johnny from Summer Teeth, and Gene Simmons wants to trademark a hand gesture on All Around Music. Welcome back. I'll give Gene Simmons a hand gesture to trademark. <laughs> Kicking it off. <laughs> just right away. Oh, I had to say it. I wanted to say it in the intro, but I figured I'd keep it classy for a ah, second. There you go. Keep it classy. <laughs> keep them coming in, and they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up, bud? Oh, you know, just hanging out. It was a great week. <laughs> <laughs> My week was okay, I guess. I didn't really do a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Just one of them weeks. Uh, I'm kind of getting burnt out at work. I need a vacation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could I could use one. I'm getting to but Hey, we got... Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, you're going to... Um, uh, was it Third Eye Blind? Yeah. Yeah, we're go- you're going with us. Yeah. So, July 9th. That's coming up. Yeah, and I'm next re- week's July Fourth weekend. Yeah, you got you get days off. Uh, just the fourth. Oh, never mind then. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm off the weekend, but I don't get that Monday off. They gave us Monday off. Did they? It was like a miracle. Wow. I don't, I don't even know how because like somebody at work said that our boss said we're not getting any days off. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> and then we were like, that doesn't make any sense. We have to get you, the fourth <laughs> off. <laughs> you get nothing. <laughs> And then they came back and said, we're closed that Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday. And we're like, that makes more sense. <laughs> like, what are we going to do? We're a service. Not closed Sunday? Well, we're always closed Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> we um, always close. But it makes no sense when a company that does, like, service for other companies is working on days that, like, everybody is, like, closed. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Sit around. Yeah. Do so, nothing. Either way, you're paying us, I guess. But... Because that's what I'm going to do that Monday. Sit around, do nothing. Yeah. Do you get extra pay for Monday? Nope. I didn't figure. I wouldn't. <laughs> if we were open, I wouldn't. But Yeah, so that'll be a long eight hours. Yeah. You can, I don't know, play a bit. Take, a, take your Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Playing Xbox. What's it look like I'm doing? <laughs> I guess it makes sense because there's always a paper, so somebody's got to work. Right. So I'm guessing people have to work on the 4th, too. Well, I mean, we're the newspaper. Right. So, I mean, like, you have the 4th off, right? Oh, yeah, but... But uh, there's other people that have to work. Night shift, no. (laughs) They don't have it off. Yeah. But they get paid double time. Well, yeah. So... You know, it's a... At least they're... Is some incentive for them working the holiday. It's a dying medium, so. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> How does it feel working for something that's obsolete? Uh, feels pretty great. <laughs> Still pays you at the end of the week. Yeah, I don't really have to worry anything until they're like, "Hey, uh, <laughs> you're fired." <laughs> Why? Uh, well, we don't have any money anymore, so it turns you're fired. out nobody's actually buying the newspapers. We're just dumping them into the lake. <laughs> <laughs> And the government caught on. <laughs> yeah, so we caught a major fine, and that had to. That was too so much. Now we got to so fire gotta you. Yeah. <laughs> Just you, though. <laughs> <laughs> everybody else gets to keep their job. Yeah, everybody else gets to keep theirs, but yours is expendable. So, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> that guy literally sits there all day and does nothing. <laughs> oh, shit. I wish I sat there all day and did nothing. Yeah, me too. That's the dream job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, only only the Kardashians can get away with that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, because they got famous off nothing. Mm. No, the one took it from Ray J. 
Oh, yeah, they got famous for uh, their daughter <laughs> blowing some other dude on a camera. <laughs> and getting OJ off with murder. Yeah, that too. <laughs> but he still ended up in jail anyways. Yeah, well, it's for the best. Wrote a book, If I Did It. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What a fucking dick. <laughs> That's just basically him confessing. Oh, I know. It never got published. Did you know that? Oh, it didn't? No, I was reading about it. When I was watching that um, that OJ thing that FX did with uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. And uh, mm. the people, the lady from uh, American Horror Story. And they did that whole OJ, it was like a mini series of the OJ trial. Oh, yeah. And so then I was curious because I remembered that he wrote that book. So I looked it up. And yeah, I don't think it, I think it either like was published for like a, like a very short amount of time and then was pulled or it never got published at all. I don't think it ever got published, huh. but there's copies of it on the internet. I think you can get the internet never lets you down. No, I want to get a copy of it and read it. Right. But I just want like, like the spark notes version of it where it just tells me how he admits to doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else does all the work and you're like, ah, that's what I needed. Yeah. Cause I really don't care about his life story leading up to why he murdered her right yeah i don't care <laughs> <laughs> i watched the tv show so he's like the glove doesn't fit well maybe you should put it on all the way you want to know why the glove didn't fit because he was wearing a rubber glove underneath of it uh, and it was getting stuck on his hand smart bastard because it was evident so he had to wear a, a rubber glove to handle it, you know what I mean. So they basically just screw their own. Yeah, like well, I'm t- now this is all off of the TV series. Oh, <laughs> all of my knowledge of it, but I think it was fairly accurate. I mean, it was all public information hmm. for the most part. And their thing on there was there's like they their predict their portrayal of it was that the lawyer that suggested he do that, like he suggested it, but the other people in the group. Mm-hmm. It, oh, it was the uh, it was the state's attorney or whatever that suggested it, I think, and his supervisor. She didn't want him to do it, and then it backfired because the glove didn't fit, <laughs> and that's like that was like the thing, you know, that really sealed the deal right there. Uh, glove doesn't fit. Guess what? Guess who's walking he free? Must have quit. So, anyways, the local spotlight this week. Yeah, I got some good shows. June thirtieth through. July 2nd and July 4th. Who's Your Highway will be forming at DT Kirby's Beach Food in Monticello. Show starts at 9 p.m. each day. No cover either. No. Uh, Friday, June 30th, Cody Ray and Bam will be performing at Digby's Pub and Patio. Show starts at 10 p.m. No cover. All ages. Nice. Saturday, July 1st, Minor Measures and the Rock Duo will be performing at 6th Street Dive at 9 p.m. No cover. Nice. Uh, Saturday, July 1st, Flatland Harmony Experiment will be performing at Digby's Pub and Patio. Show starts at 10 p.m., no cover. Nice. You like those no cover ones. <laughs> Saturday, Saturday, July 1st, the Doom Room's second annual field day. There will be 10 bands performing. Uh, there will be dodgeball, slip and slide, kickball, uh, battle pong, and more. Bring a dish or chip in $5. Bring a dish or chip in $5. <laughs> Starts at 2 p.m. Sounds like something uh, no one should miss. Slip and slide kickball. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how do you play <laughs> slip and slide kickball? I don't know. <laughs> Just got to see it, I guess. Right. Uh, Saturday, July 1st, the Rocky Horror Picture Show will be at the Lafayette Theater. Doors open at 11 p.m. Show starts at midnight. Ages 17 and under. Must be accompanied by an adult. Uh, it's a $5 cover. Nice. So the Foo Fighters have announced a new album, mm-hmm. uh, Concrete and Gold, and it will be released in September. Sounds like we're gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> Thy Art is Murder announced new album called Dear Desolation, and will be released August 18th. I feel like we've talked about that before. I don't know. <laughs> You're like, uh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, Taylor Swift's songs have generated $400,000 after returning to streaming since last week. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's probably why she went back. Yeah. (laughs) She said she went back because of uh, the anniversary of her first album's release. What does that have to do with anything? That's what I I was saying. Uh, Prodigy, one half of iconic rap duo Mob Deep, 
has passed away from complications of his lifelong battle with sickle cell anemia. Dang. Got another one from us. <clears throat> yeah. 21 Pilots Stressed Out music video has surpassed 1 billion views on YouTube. <laughs> 1 billion. Do you remember the first video that I remember passing 1 billion on YouTube? <laughs> is it music related or yeah. is this, Is it? Yeah. Oh, wait, is it the... Uh... Gangnam Style. <laughs> God, don't start that. <laughs> I remember that. Upo Gumbo style. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I think probably one million of those plays came from you. At least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every 10 minutes. I think I'm going to make it my ringtone. You're like, have you guys heard this song? Upo Gumbo style. God damn it. I'm going to make that my ringtone. Oh, God. I'm going to do it. Oh, God. Uh, Panic at the Disco's title track from Death of a Bachelor has gone platinum. Nice. Uh, Jay-Z announces new album 444 to be released on June 30th. Do you think that has anything to do with the Illuminati? Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Seger's music finally lands on the streaming services. Nice. Yeah, I just downloaded a bunch of it today. <laughs> Hanson rips Justin Bieber music as... Chlamydia of the years. <laughs> Dude, the same thing was said about you guys when you were popular. Yep. Wow. Everybody's like, Hanson's chlamydia. <laughs> Ew. Fucking Hanson. What was that on? Uh... Mm, Bob. Oh, what was that movie? Uh, Waiting. Mm-hmm. And the guy's like, you know, it's a shame that chlamydia is a venereal disease. That's a beautiful name. I'd like to name my daughter that. <laughs> <laughs> Or oh, STD, man. same shit. <laughs> so uh, there's some uh, more tour announcements this week. Yeah. Issues announce headlining tour with volumes. They'll be in Chicago, Illinois at the House of Blues October 13th. That's a Friday, by the way. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. There is a Friday. There's Friday the I, there's, 13th. I think there's two Friday 13th. What? No. I think we already had the one, maybe. I don't know. But Friday the 13th in October? Hell yeah. That hasn't happened in a while. Mm-hmm. He is a legend announces a headlining tour with uh, Islander, To Speak of Wolves, and Bad Seed Rising. Julia, Illinois, at the Forge, August 13th. That's not a Friday. Dang. <laughs> or is it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the other one. I think there's two this year. <clears throat> hmm. Uh, Future announces a world tour. He will be nowhere close to Indiana. That's neat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, but Lord will be. Lord sets a North American uh, leg of Melodrama World Tour for 2018. Rosemont, Illinois at the Allstate Arena, March 27th. Yeah. I want to go yeah, see yeah, yeah. Randy Marsh. Live. Yeah, who wouldn't want to see Randy Marsh? <laughs> <laughs> this feller goes up on the stage and calls himself Steamy Nicks <laughs> and just shits his britches. <laughs> Them britches need saving. <laughs> Uh, a perfect circle. Uh, bleh, a perfect circle. Not a perfect. <laughs> a perfect circle announced tour. They'll be in Chicago at the UIC Pavilion, uh, November twenty fourth. Yeah, have fun dealing with that traffic. That's Black <laughs> Friday. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. Uh, the Yeah Yeah Yeahs will play their first full concert in four years at the uh, Sound on Sound Festival. Sound on Sound. November 10th through the 12th in Sherwood Forest. Outside of Austin, Texas. Tickets are on sale now. Sounds like a weird orgy. Sound on Sound Festival. (laughs) Let's just make sound on sounds and get weird. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, DMX announces Rough Riders 20th anniversary Uh, anniversary uh, reunion tour. Rough Riders. (laughs) (laughs) Heck's going to give it to you. (laughs) Oh, he's going to give it to you. (laughs) (laughs) You better watch yourself. Better watch it. Shoot, what's your uh, album of the week, bud? Oh, man. So, uh, we were driving back from Illinois last weekend, and I was running out of music to listen to, and I remember we were talking about uh, Gym Class Heroes. Mm-hmm. So, I downloaded their albums and was really digging the Paper Cut Chronicles. Oh, my God. Paper Cut Chronicles. <laughs> the That's pop, the album. The Crock-Pot Chronicles. <laughs> the Crock-Pot Chronicles. <laughs> Hey, that could be interesting too. You can make a lot of things in the crock pot. <laughs> you know how like what last <clears throat> week or the week before you said we never pick albums from the same year? Yeah, it happened again. Yeah. I got Bayside Self Talented album, two thousand five. Yeah. 
Good Shiznit right there. That is a good album. Yeah. I listened to it today. Yeah, me too. I was like, man, Grant's pick's better than mine. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> They're both solid albums. Yeah. Those are, I was rocking out to both of those in 2005. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. So this week, we talked to Johnny from Summer Teeth mm-hmm. about his bands and what they're up to. Yeah, uh, Summer Teeth is from Toronto, Canada. So going across the border a little bit. Well, yeah. So let's uh, have a chat with him. You all sound like seasoned musicians. Um, how did Summer Teeth start? Uh, that's an interesting one. Um, I had just had a bunch of songs written for a while that I knew we wanted to get going eventually. Mm-hmm. And uh, without really finding anyone I wanted um, to do it with, um, I approached Simon, who is a guitar player now, because he had a studio in his basement, um, just to record the songs with me, because Simon can play like pretty much any instrument. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. He's super musically talented. Um, so we asked him, or I asked him to just record it with me just because I just needed it to get done, essentially. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, we were working on it for a long time. Um, we had like drums written and then I found Adam on online actually on a, a Toronto group called buns, <laughs> which I don't think anyone knows what that is. Cause it's just a Toronto thing. Huh. Um, and yeah, Adam joins. We had to scrap all the drum parts we had written, do it again. And then we found a guitar player who did all the guitar parts and then we scrapped him, and then Simon did them just out of uh, like necessity, pretty much. And then uh-huh. after that, he just said he would join. And uh-huh. it's just been pieces and pieces and pieces all the way through. Um, so, yeah, it's a pretty convoluted thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then Will, like I knew Simon from school, and Adam knew Will from school. And it just worked out that way. And we all went to the same program, just at two different schools called Music Industry Arts. Oh, okay. We're all music dudes. Um, so that worked out. It, it was weird that it happened like that. But yeah, I guess that's where the seasoned musicians come from. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, because uh, this is your uh, your first EP, right? As Summer Teeth? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, I played in a couple projects with Simon in school. So I think I got to know him that way and I just knew how good he was. Oh, okay. Um, and then, yeah, from there, it's like some of the same songs from back then, but uh, we always knew we wanted to do this kind of sound and it just kind of worked out. Awesome. So um, what are your, what are your guys' like main influences? Um, for this band, mine would be um, like – older bands that I kind of grew up with. Um, not like the insane like emo stuff or anything, but st- like bands like Jimmy Eat World yeah. and Death Cab were kind of my main ones I keep bringing up for this band. Nice. Um, so those are, those are bands that like, they were definitely came around in the emo scene, but they both had a lot of crossover appeal, which is kind of what we're hoping to do in a perfect world. Right. Um, but yeah, Jimmy World, Death Cab for Cutie. I like a lot of the newer bands out there. Like um, Dangerous Summer was great. Um, the Hotel Years, amazing these days. Bands like that are influencers for what we're doing now. Nice. We're See, I haven't, I haven't heard those last two you talked about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like been... Jimmy Eat World and Death Cab are well, a couple of my seeing... favorite bands too. Yeah, We're going to be seeing Jimmy, Jimmy Eat World here this summer. Yeah. They're coming here. So. Yeah, they don't come <laughs> here anymore. Oh, really? Well, that's a bummer. Yeah, last time they were through, they played in uh, London, which is like two hours away. But... Oh, wow. I figured they'd be in Toronto before they were in Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of yeah, so uh, a lot of, a lot of a lot bands of... don't play through Indianapolis or Indiana that much. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Like, I think it's because of uh, the Canadian dollars in such bad shape that bands are kind of avoiding Canada. Oh, oh. Really? I didn't know that. In the last year and a half or so, yeah, it's been pretty bad, but oh. it's whatever. <laughs> Economy. Yeah, yeah, that's no fun. No. <laughs> At least you don't have Trump. <laughs> yeah, so, no red states up here. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have a certain process behind uh, writing your music? Um, we're probably going to dive into a new one this time, but before, because it was just me at the start, I 
would pretty much write acoustic songs, completed acoustic songs, mm-hmm. and uh, we just flush them out from there. Um, like a lot of the stuff when I sent Adam, the drummer, the tracks that were just finished acoustic songs, and I said, you know, write drums to these. Um, same with the parts that Simon wrote guitar parts for, but this time, since we actually have members and we're doing this, um, we're going to try a few different things, see if we can get in a room and hash stuff out. But the way I write is still very, like, I'll write a finished acoustic song before I show anyone kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never been just, like, an idea guy where I just we, I just have a riff and I go off. I usually, like, write pretty fast and try to finish it all. Oh, okay. In one go kind of thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, try to stay with the moment. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and if a song takes too long to write, it's usually because it's garbage anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how that is. You write something, and then you're like, I you're like, I can't remember what I wrote. It must be garbage. No, yeah, I think it was like Jay-Z or something said, if a song takes longer than half an hour, it's not good, which is an extreme amount of time, and I don't think that's correct. But... <laughs> right. <laughs> if he's busting out songs in 30 minutes, uh, yeah, that's yeah. impressive. <laughs> hey, man, it's Jay-Z. That's well, true. I mean, he has beats and stuff done for him already. He just has to rap it up. That's oh, true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hova. <laughs> <laughs> so um what's the favorite what's your favorite venue that you've played? Ever? Um, um sure. <laughs> <laughs> like we're just starting out as so we're playing a lot of smaller stuff. Um but in Toronto, um my favorite venue is the Opera House which is like a 800 cap venue here. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I played with old bands. That's one of the best. A lot of like venues are flipping in Toronto these days. I'm sure it happens in Indianapolis as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's a lot of great venues here. It's, it's hard to pick. Um, like for smaller venues, I love like Sneaky D's. Um, there's a lot of like great shows there because there's a company called Homesick that runs a lot of them. Oh, okay. Um, so we deal with a ton of great shows at Sneaky D's. Um, but yeah, the Opera House has always been like a legendary venue in Toronto, so it's great to play that. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Um, everyone reacts differently when the crowd is not energetic. Uh, how do you guys get the crowd into the music? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, when we're playing, it's just kind of you hope for the best. You can't really... like stop a song and if people aren't into it right well yeah right i mean you know you throw your hands up and tell them to you know give the gesture to like get up or move around or something or yeah usually i'll tell them at the beginning of the show to come to the front if you know people are hesitant or whatever Mm -hmm. right but uh yeah if it's an inactive crowd or it's a small crowd um i'll usually just make jokes about it and (laughs) my awkwardness will kind of pay off a little bit there there you go (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I try not to take anything like that too seriously because it's all for fun. Right. But yeah. Right. Simon and I will just kind of take it into our own hands, and I don't know. I don't know what we do, but it's <laughs> probably it's probably messy from their standpoint. But well, there you go. You show the crowd. Be like, look, you don't have to be awkward. We can be the awkward ones. So you don't have to feel awkward. <laughs> yeah. I'll absorb all of it. For them. Right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so um. Tell us a little bit about your next show and where it's at and everything. Uh, we're playing two shows um, with a band uh, called Agi, who they're on Triple Crown Records. Nice. Uh, yeah, they're coming through on like a little U.S. tour, and we're going to play a couple Canadian shows with them. We're playing in Ottawa and in Toronto. Uh, Toronto, I believe, is at Sneaky D's, and Ottawa, I believe, is at a place called Black Squirrel. And that's July 13th in Ottawa, July 14th in Toronto. Awesome. With Agi, who they're like a super cool, like, I want to say indie rock band, but that's so vague, like art rock, um, <laughs> kind of like an emo Sigur Ross kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, I noticed. Like, uh, they're really good, yeah. Well, on, on your Facebook page, your genre says uh, sad guy rock. <laughs> yeah. That was like, when I was first pitching it to people online, that's what I went with because I wasn't sure. <laughs> I wanted to join an emo band in their twenties, you know. Right. <laughs> You'd be like, what genre? That guy rock seemed like more adult. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like it though. It's it awesome. Like, I didn't think yeah. you guys were like, like emo. I don't know. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 
when you like, see the word emo, you think of like when I was in high school and kids were like emo with like their bangs in their face and their sadness <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. I mean, like <laughs> just in terms of scene, like emo revival is a big thing now. Like I said, like bands like Hotel Year, um, like modern baseball, stuff like that is kind of like emo revival. And there's like that balancing composure scene. Um, but we just also didn't want to be like a pop punk band because that's a whole other scene that right. I don't think we fit in, if that makes any sense. Right. Um, so yeah, Sad Guy Rock seems like a nice in between. <laughs> you can be Sad Guy forever. You don't have to grow up that emo phase. And there you sad. go. Starting your own genre. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, more genres. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your EP, Hope This Helps, has uh, been out for a few months. Can you tell us how you. Uh, all prepared for the release? We prepared for it by finally finishing a lineup. <laughs> it was nice. Um, I wanted it out way earlier, and I was, like, stressing because it had been so long without it going out. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of just prepared by getting our ducks in a row and making sure we had a solid lineup and a solid few shows booked. Um, we were trying to get a video done, but it just didn't work out. So we have them coming out in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. Yeah. Um, besides that, it was all just those, that tedious decision making, like artwork and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there wasn't much preparation because it was just me itching to get it out. <laughs> right. He's like, ah, <laughs> just come on. <laughs> <laughs> just yelling at Simon to finish mixing. <laughs> <laughs> So um, you have your song, We Dance for Rain, that we're going to play yeah. for you this week. Um, Sweet. Is it about anything specific that you want to tell us? or? Um, it was pretty much just your basic breakup song. <laughs> um, it was weird because I, like, I wrote the chorus for it years ago, and I just kind of sat on it for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't know what I wanted to use it for until I started writing more songs that kind of felt like it and i kind of spawned this whole project then i wrote like the rest of it shortly after like we had a weird version of it at some point in school simon and i and that's kind of what um started the project is that we knew we wanted to write music like that song so we thought it was a good statement song for putting it out as a single um nice but yeah that was one that actually did come together like pretty quickly when I sat down to write it, that one was like 20 minutes start to finish. Oh, nice. Just like Jay, Jay-Z. <laughs> Jay-Z was right. <laughs> you came in writing it and you knew what, how you wanted it to sound and it just flowed, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of when I decided, you know, that's kind of music we should be writing. Um, <laughs> gladly, the guys agreed. Awesome. Nice. I have to admit, um, you know, as you listen to bands, they tend to remind you of other other musicians and to me, uh, when you sing, it, it kind of reminds me of a little bit of Mark Hoppus. Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> like, not in a bad yeah, way, like I in get, a good way. I get that a lot. Which oh, is really? Crazy. Because, like, I can hear it. Obviously, it's my voice that all sounds differently to me than anyone else. Right. But I get that one a lot. I get um, Adam joined the band because he said I sound like Alkaline Trio, and that's his favorite band. Nice. Yeah, which I, I never I, listened I can to that too. <laughs> yeah, I never listened to them, so I didn't really know. I guess they're both in Blink Larry Two now, so right. Yeah, <laughs> which I don't even want to talk about that. So <laughs> <laughs> Tom DeLonge was like my idol when I was like in middle school and high school. So me too, man. Like I just <laughs> wanted tattoos because he had them. That was about right. It. <laughs> um, and now he's just a crazy person. <laughs> hey, now. There's nothing wrong with believing in UFOs. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that documentary of his, and that's like, that was the bookends for the I don't Tom think I've, I don't think I've seen his documentary. I bought his book, but I haven't finished it. Uh, What's his book about? Is it about aliens? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's um, it's a fiction book, though, but it's supposed to be inspired by, like, true things. Oh, of course. So I don't know. I've gotten it's a pretty good sized book. I've only gone through like half of it. <laughs> but, I mean, it's good. So it's not like too crazy. It's a pretty cool story for 
what it is. <laughs> the way you say the way you say good means it's not that good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's not gonna win any awards, but <laughs> maybe some weird sci-fi award. Yeah, like it's a cool like sci-fi thing if you're into that. <laughs> I just hope he goes like that the scholastic route and not the I'm gonna start a cult somewhere route. <laughs> I don't know, it's hard to say because he's got that whole new like media empire he's trying to start, that to the stars thing. And yeah, it's kind of cultish. Sounds like a cult. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a cultish thing. <laughs> yeah, I wrote this book and then now people are kind of like taking it as a true story and like that's how literally every religion starts. Well, there's a second book now, but I haven't bought it. I don't know if I will. I gotta finish the first one. <laughs> <laughs> he's the new token. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I like what were we talking about? I was back to, I got Mark Hoppus a lot, and I'm not gonna fight it because I loved Blink One Two growing up. Right. I mean, also he he's not the best singer, but <laughs> I'll take it. I think Mark's <laughs> better singer than Tom. <laughs> so. Oh, totally. <laughs> and I mean, I'm I'm not gonna sound like Adele or anything. <laughs> Well, I don't think you'd want to sound like Adele. I think <laughs> no, I don't think that's I it. think you'd want your own voice, right? <laughs> I think I got we got one review from the EP, and that was it wasn't a great review. And he told us we sounded like Paramore, but with shitty vocals. I didn't. I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't believe that. I think I, like, I think hey, you guys sound, like sound Paramore, great. Like instead of Haley Williams, it's Mark Hoppus. Like, <laughs> well, of course I don't sound like Haley Williams, <laughs> right? What are you trying to do to me? <laughs> well, despite what that person says, I think the EP is great. Yeah. <laughs> it really Thanks. is. It was it was tough because I didn't write any of the songs with the goal. So that's we're hoping with the, these new songs to kind of have like a more cohesive thing going on. Because mm-hmm. uh, we all kind of know what we want to do with the band now. Like literally all I was doing is writing a song every couple months for this EP. Yeah. Trying to, get some, for the best. trying to get a good amount of content for the release, right? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, like, I wasn't like trying to get a X amount of songs out. There's, there's stuff I wanted to write about, which is kind of why it's titled Hope This Helps. Yeah, Just makes getting, sense. <laughs> getting stuff off my chest, kind of thing. Sad, right. guy. Sad guy there's music. More, <laughs> yeah, there's more cohesion to this, these upcoming songs. So I'm pretty excited about that. Right on. Awesome. <laughs> Is there so what I guess what have you been listening to lately? Like that's a, I listen to weird music like <laughs> I work um at a music company like finding music for commercials. Oh yeah. That's pretty that's sweet. My 9 to 5 job. Nice. So I listen to a lot of weird stuff cuz I kind of have to do that. <laughs> I'm opening my Spotify now to see what I've been listening to. Like my favorite record from last year was like pop you guys know pop they're like toronto band they're just called pop pop p-u-p oh pop i don't yeah. know i don't know them you gotta check them out they're like they're a toronto band they're like one of the best i say they love to check that out wow yeah they're amazing they're doing like they're not just a local band they're pretty big these days oh, nice. um micro microwaves a really good band i was into um they put out a record earlier this year, the end of last year. I don't know. I'm always sleeping on records more than I should be. Nice. Um, <laughs> and I also didn't really want to listen to them because they were called Microwave. <laughs> <laughs> but once you get past that, they're really good. I'm terrible with with getting in and like listening to new music. It's I want to go to my old my go tos, and then you're like, no, you got to listen to something new. And it's like every Friday, I try to check release dates now to see what's out. Because I never keep up with like, like bands on Facebook and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, I've been. Oh, getting, I always miss the new stuff. I've been getting better about it since I signed up for the Apple Music thing. It recommends new stuff to me, so I'll listen to that. Oh, nice. Yeah, like Manchester Orchestra is my favorite band of all time. And they got new stuff coming out, so I just kind of eating that up. Nice. Yeah, um, I like them. They're pretty good. Oh, they're better than pretty good. <laughs> They're amazing. There you go. <laughs> yeah, they got a new record coming out at the end of July, so that's counting down excited. the days, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> right on. 
Well, we won't keep you for too long. Um, is there anything you want to shout out or say before we let you go? I'm so bad at this part. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, we'll have a song. Like, Pubs and Selves is pretty new, but we're going to keep writing and we'll have new songs out, hopefully, in the fall. Um, yeah, from then on, we're just playing a ton of shows. We're going to announce, like, a little mini tour um, in August, which is about two weeks long. Come to Indiana. Uh-huh. <laughs> getting to the states is hard man yeah getting, man, getting to the states is yeah whole, it is hard now whole separate thing yeah yeah, yeah so I, don't look, I don't look very mexican so i'll be okay <laughs> but... it's fine if you come from the north yeah <laughs> it's totally fine yeah we're gonna opposite of game of thrones <laughs> <laughs> can't awesome. wait for that <laughs> well thanks again for coming on and taking time out of your day to you know, chat with us. Yeah, thanks so much for asking me. It's pretty cool. Oh, anytime. I was anytime. really worried it was going to be live for some reason because I don't understand. Oh, how no, that... we can't. We can't handle live. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so I was super nervous. I was going to say something dumb, which I did. But I I say that some of the dumbest stuff on here, and I don't even edit it out sometimes. So don't worry <laughs> yeah, about you, it. You get to edit it. I'm at I'm at the mercy. <laughs> oh no, don't worry. I won't. I won't. I don't make any to anybody sound stupid. So. <laughs> I'll make myself sound stupid. But. <laughs> but yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for chatting with us, and uh, get a hold of us when you get some when you get your next stuff out. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we'll. Uh, thanks a lot. No problem. We'll uh, let you know when the episode's ready. It should be ready Monday. Yeah, sounds I'll, big. Uh, shoot you a message and let you know it's out. Okay, sweet. All right, man. All see right. ya. Thanks, man. Yeah, have a good night. You too. you too. So that was Johnny from Summer Teeth. Uh, you can find Summer Teeth on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Bandcamp. Uh, head over to their band camp, check out their music, give them a like on Facebook, and click that follow button on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, the song is called We Dance for Rain from their EP, Hope This Helps. Let's take a listen. And it is in iTunes, by the way. So. Oh, yes, it is iTunes. So you can I, get it there. Yeah, I downloaded it. I did too. It's great. Let's check out the song.
All right, that was Summer Teeth. Their song, We Dance for Rain. Yep, straight out of Toronto. <laughs> Word up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what I was going for, but that's no. how it came out. No, it's uh, good <laughs> tunes. Definitely, uh, definitely check them out. Yeah. Get that album, that EP. Uh, it's it's solid. Really is. It's pretty awesome. It's good tunes. I've listened to it several times, so. Yeah. Because, not because, you know, we were doing the interview, but because I legitimately enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, we got a little bit of news. Yep. A uh, few headlines. Some are stupid. Some are cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so, <sighs> Gene Simmons. Good old Jen Simmons. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even really want to talk about him. He wants to trademark <laughs> the the rock on or your, what do you want to say? The devil horn. Yeah, the hand devil ge- horns, bruh. Jan Jester. Yeah. So according to the Hollywood Reporter, Kiss frontman Gene Simmons is looking to trademark a very popular hand gesture. You may know it as the rock on symbol or the devil horns. But he wants to make the hand formation his own. He's a fucking douche. <laughs> Specifically, Simmons' version of the gesture requires the thumb, index, and pinky fingers to extend <laughs> outward. That's the douchey version of doing it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Can't wait to get that <clears throat> camera. <clears throat> <clears throat> While the middle f- and ring fingers remain curled against one's palm. The official application was filed with the United States Patent and Trademark Office last Friday. Simmons wishes to seek ownership. In the cases of entertainment, namely live performances by musical artists, personal appearances by musical artists, really? <laughs> the original, the origins of Simmons' use of the gesture go back to November 1974, where it got its first commercial exposure on Kiss's Hotter Than Hell tour. How can he prove that? He can't. Yeah. He can't prove that he made that up. No. The coveted rock star may have some issues convincing the trademark examiner, however, considering the symbol is not only extremely well-known, but is also the symbol for I love you in an American Sign Language. Good. <laughs> That's where I thought it got funny. And an I... I love you, man. And <clears throat> as IO9 points out, the exact same alignment that Spider-Man has been using for decades to shoot his web. Mm-hmm. It is also widely known that Roddy James Dio popularized the symbol just without the thumb extended, which his grandmother would use to push away the devil. (laughs) (laughs) The ancient symbol, Sign of the Horns, which dates back to the 5th century BC, was the first use of the gesture documented by the founder of Buddhism. um, A Buddha guy. (laughs) 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 A Buddha guy. (laughs) Other iconic uses of the gesture turn up in places like Cover the Beatles' single Yellow Submarine and Eleanor Rigby, where John Lennon could be seen sporting the symbol, and the New York Post also has previously reported that in certain Mediterranean and Latin countries, it's also a symbol made to a man to imply that his wife is cheating on him. No matter which way you perceive the hand gesture, we'll have to wait to see if the U.S. Patent Office and Trademark Office approves it first, but if, if Simmons is successful and is trademarking, the next question is how does it become enforced? Considering the widespread use of symbol, this will surely be a topic to uh, revisit pending the ruling from the examiner. Until then, uh, throw your horns up in any way and everywhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what if I did one hand like the Dio and then one hand like... Dude, you're, you're getting it. You're going to get fired, bud. Remember when <laughs> Trump tried to trademark you're fired? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I forgot Now he's that. our president. You fired. <clears throat> now he's the president. Yeah, well, pr- yeah, well now you're about to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he ain't going anywhere. You know he's not. No, it ain't gonna happen. No, people are like, "There's America. We don't. We don't. There's quit. too much paperwork to file. They're just not gonna do it. We don't quit. This is America. <laughs> mm, devil horns. <laughs> <clears throat> They'd be like, "Yeah, country on, brother." <laughs> like, no, that's wrong. No. So the uh, Grammy Awards announced Album of the Year changes and online voting for members. Really? Yeah. I was like, did I spell members wrong? It looks like members. (laughs) (laughs) But after announcing last month that they'd be moving back to New York City, 
The Grammys have revealed that they'll be switching the way voting works, too. They are transitioning to online voting and updating the rules for its top category, Album of the Year, as well, according to ABC. The Recording Academy will be adding songwriters to the nominees for Album of the Year category, which was previously released for artists, producers, and engineers, ABC explains. Uh, the Grammys is just a shit show. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was just waiting for you to say it. This means all people involved in the album, including featured artists, songwriters, and producers, can be added, so long as they are credited with at least 33% or more playing time on the album to be eligible for nomination. Prior to all this, all participants on the album would earn a nomination, even if they only worked on one song. The new site clarifies, though, that songwriters and producers who work on a big hit album could still earn a nomination for record or song of the year. The Recording Academy will also be switching to online voting for its 13,000 members for the 2018 Grammy Awards, and voting takes place this fall for songs and albums released between October 1st, 2016 and September 30th, 2017. Senior Vice President of Awards Bill oh, Frymuth, Frymuth? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bill Frey, Freymuth? 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 Yeah. Freymuth? Yeah, Freymuth. Freymuth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bill oh, Freymuth <laughs> tells ABC this will hopefully attract younger voters and touring musicians who are ab- unable to vote during voting season. Uh, quote, it's something that has been long desired, long talked about, and long investigated, uh, Frymuth said about online voting. Hmm. So, it's the Grammys. Who yeah, cares? it's <laughs> they could have a category for best walking entrance up to get your Grammy. Oh my God! Don't even suggest it. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, "Oh shit, that's a good idea." Who's who had the best walk up last year? Let's vote on it for the next Grammys. <laughs> Just vote for the person who biffed it. Vote for the biggest titties. <laughs> <laughs> vote for the biggest tits, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Metallica's Lars Ulrich has been knighted. Um, Lars, the drummer of Metallica, has been knighted in his home country of Denmark, according to Loudwire. The Crown Prince of Denmark awarded Ulrich the Knight's Cross of the Order of Dingleberry, uh, Dingenbrong, sorry, that was probably offensive <laughs> to somebody. <laughs> this is what popped into my head. I just smacked my head on the microphone. Is it Danny Brong? Danny Brog? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm butchering your your traditions. Denmark. <laughs> Dan, Dan and Brog. for the otter Danes, that's easy, Danes, yeah. for notable country... <laughs> Wow. Contributions to military, <laughs> civil service, technology, business, and culture. You know, it's funny. You learn things every day because, like, I didn't know before we started this podcast that Lars was from Denmark. Yeah, I didn't I know that either. We said it one other time, I think, that he was from somewhere. Lars. Yeah, I never <clears throat> knew. I never really cared much about Lars. No, so. let's play a healthy exercise <laughs> where we learn each other's names. He doesn't really seem like he has much of an accent or anything. No. Like, so no. That's how I judge all the people that I meet. And they have to have an accent to be from somewhere else. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Best so, be judging. So American. So American. <laughs> uh, Jimi Hendrix Park uh, opens to public in Seattle after years of delays. Never heard of it. Me either. Maybe because all the delays. <laughs> uh, nearly three years after the city of Seattle's first City of Seattle first broke ground on their uh, planned Jimi Hendrix Park. The 2.5-acre park finally opened to the public on Saturday. For over a decade, Seattle and the Jimi Hendrix estate attempted to construct Jimi Hendrix Park, located in the city's central district in walking distance from the legendary guitarist's childhood home. However, permits, funding, and construction delays hindered the project until Saturday when over 200 people attended the park's June 17th opening. The New York Times reports, coincidentally, the opening came one day before the 50th anniversary of Hendrix's legendary Monterey Pop Festival, shown when the musician set his guitar on fire. Interesting story behind that. Yeah. I listened to, uh, well, yeah, you're like, yeah, he set his guitar on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I was that Crawfordsville radio station, the 103.9, mm-hmm. the guy that's on in the afternoons. He was there. Well, no, he was oh. talking about 
that concert because it was it was Jimi Hendrix, The Who, and the Mom and the Papas. Mm-hmm. And the Mom and the Papas were closing, but Jimi Hendrix and The Who they had to flip a coin to see who went first. Mm-hmm. So they flipped the coin. The Who lost, and they had to go first. They didn't want to go first, so they were kind of upset about it. So that's that legendary concert where they like destroyed Destroy the stage. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jimi Hendrix followed, and he's like, oh, yeah? So he just sets his guitar on fire. <laughs> huh. So he was talking about that. I was like, this guy's awesome. He always has cool stories. <laughs> um, <laughs> the park, which resides adjacent to the city's Northwest African American Museum, brims with nods to the guitar god, the lyrics to Hendrix Angel and Little Wing are etched into the sidewalks, while another path, molded after the neck of the guitar, is adorned by plaques detailing Hendrix's life. There are also Hendrix-inspired sculptures like the Shadow Wave Wall, uh, the product of a three three hundred thousand donation, three hundred dollar thousand donation from Sony Music, the Seattle Post. Oh, I thought you were stop. sorry. The Seattle Post intelligent intelligencer. <laughs> Is that a real thing? <laughs> like why? Is that a word? Intelligencer? It's not underlined. Wow. <laughs> okay. The Seattle Post Intelligencer reports. That just sounds like the Seattle Post Intelligencer. I'm so over this story. <laughs> reports. <laughs> and a shaded performance stage. Uh, Jimi Hendrix Park was originally scheduled to open in 2011 on what would have been the guitarist's 70th birthday. However, numerous issues delayed the project, even after the city of Seattle, the Jimi Hendrix Foundation, and the and the group Friends of Jimi Hendrix Park raised upwards of one point five million to bring the park into fruit. God, why? <laughs> fruition. Raised upwards of one point five million to bring the park into fruition. I'm s- this story is about as big of a shit show. Oh my as God. the park itself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from what they're saying, the park sounds pretty cool, but I don't know. That's a lot of money to make a small <laughs> park. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So the Asian American group, the Slants, um, have a Supreme Court battle going on. Mm-hmm. Five months ago, Simon Tam uh, sat anxiously at the Supreme Court hearing that would determine the fate of the band's name. He wasn't allowed to testify or argue his case and wasn't even allowed to sit near his own attorney who answered a firing squad of questions from the justices. The court has a lot of traditions, Tam tells Rolling Stone. A few months later, I guess, it's rare for people, the petitioners, to actually show up. Nevertheless, he wanted to witness what happened since it would affect the livelihood of his band. A little over a decade ago, the Portland, Oregon resident named his synth pop group the slants to line up an entirely asian american is entirely asian american and the name is a racist slur for asians so sorry I, it's the name of the band i gotta say it right <laughs> um, his intention was to put a new spin on the word which he jokes sounds like an old-fashioned as far as a uh, disparaging reference go he wanted to be empowering after the crossing uh he wanted to be powering. After crossing paths with two other uh, bands dubbed the Slants in Colorado and Arizona, he decided it was his best legal interest to trademark the moniker with the federal government, as it would establish the band as a brand and give it legal protection against other groups and attempted to use his name. For the trademark, his group would have uh, precedence, but the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office declined his registration, citing a decade-old law called... Uh, the Lanham Act. This allowed the deny. This allowed it to deny marks considered scandalous, immoral, or disparaging. So Tam, who used the professional name Simon Young, took on the government in a seven-year free speech court battle that eventually brought him before the Supreme Court. On Monday, it was announced he won his case. In a unanimous ruling, the eight justices, Neil. Uh, Gorish, Gorish, recused himself as he was uh, confirmed after arguments were presented, determined that the law um, the PTO had cited was not 
the the law PTO has cited as unconstitutional. It offends a bedrock First Amendment principle. Speech may not be banned on the grounds that it expresses an idea that offends. Just as Samuel Alto wrote in the court's ruling. So now Tam, who has seen his argument travel up through the uh, appeals court for years, is celebrating. After an excruciating legal battle that has spanned nearly eight years, we're beyond humble and thrilled to have won this case as a Supreme Court, he said in a statement. This journey has always been much bigger than our band. It's been about the right of all marginalized communities to determine what's best for ourselves. That's pretty cool. I didn't see that right. they won, so... Yeah, I'd figure I'd keep it in suspense. Dun, dun, dun. All right, thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. Uh, don't forget, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Instagram. Oh, yeah, Instagram. Uh, iTunes, Google Play, mm-hmm. YouTube. Yep. Uh, Allaroundmusicpodcast.com. Oh, yeah. Still sounds good. That's where it's at. You can find Summer Teeth on... Instagram, Twitter, iTunes, Facebook, Facebook, Bandcamp. So, Bandcamp, yep. Go check them out. And give them some downloads and listens. And uh, yeah, they're really good. So if you're in the Toronto area or if they're coming to your area by chance, then uh, go check them out. Yeah, give them some love. Mm-hmm. We'll be back next week with. Uh... Wise man's fear, right? Yeah, the wise man's fear. Yeah. Had this one in the bag for a little while. Yeah, I'm pretty so excited about this one. Gonna get them out there and got a little a little something something, so Yep. Mm-hmm. Check that out. Stay tuned. <laughs>